How much horsepower can we get out of old Casper? Hey, the results just might scare you. Today on Horsepower TV, we'll turn our project van Casper into white lightning. First with a free-flowing exhaust, then an air charger to help it breathe, before we reprogram the computer for more power. Of course, we'll test the work on our dyno jet. Chuck's got a tip on how to pocket port your heads, and I'll take you to the races, the IHRA Summer Nationals, and the heart of Mid-America. So hang on for Horsepower TV. Hi, and welcome to Horsepower TV. A couple of weeks ago, we gave Chuck's Astrovan a new look by slamming the suspension and bolting on some body parts. And the result, well, pardon the pun, pretty fantastic. But today, we're going to help it live up to its new image by enhancing the horsepower. Oh, how did we do on that baseline run? Well, we got 140 rear wheel horsepower on that run. Now, that might be enough to get you up and down the boulevard, but it's not going to shut down the competition when the light turns green. Now, I could really tell this old Vortec V6 had its tongue hanging out on that run. So let's see what we can do to help it breathe a little bit easier. A factory exhaust does exactly what it's supposed to do, make things quiet. But that quiet can't cost you horsepower because of the restricted path inside the muffler. That's why swapping out your exhaust can help your engine make more power and give it a lot more aggressive sound. Sounds great, and the way we're going to get it is with this custom catback exhaust from Borla. Now, it's made from stainless steel and features a direct bolt up to the factory cat, a high flow muffler feeding into a pair of dual tailpipes, and a pair of polished tips. They're going to exit through the exhaust openings in our van's new body kit. Well, here's a look at why the stock exhaust is so restrictive. See this massive muffler here? Well, inside this thing is a maze of baffles, passages, and packing. And up here, well, it all dumps into a single tailpipe. So what do you say we get busy and get this thing off of here? With this new system ought to give us some easy horsepower. The muffler just bolts right in place to the stalker and even uses the original hangers. The driver's side tailpipe is next. Now, we had to add this hanger here since the Astro didn't come with one from the factory. <coughs> Finally, the passenger side tailpipe finishes the installation. Now, we've left all the clamps loose and we'll tighten them once everything's lined up. With our free flowing exhaust, the other part of the equation is a free breathing intake. We're going to replace the factory air cleaner element with this air charger we got from K&N. Unlike the stock paper element here, this one is reusable when you wash it and should flow 15% better. Since the engine is breathing a lot easier now, we need to optimize both the timing and fuel delivery to take advantage of those upgrades. Now, reprogramming the computer is something that anybody can do with this power programmer from Hypertech. It plugs right into the diagnostic port so you can choose from different tuning options, adjust your transmission shift points and firmness, and even compensate for different axle ratios and tire sizes. Okay. Remember, we made 140 horsepower with the van before bolting on the exhaust, adding the filter charger, and reprogramming the computer. Now, what do you say we kick some Astro? OK, 
Okay, there's where you shifted, and then you made 157 horsepower at the rear wheel. Ooh, now that's 17 more than what we started with, and, and I'm really going to feel that next time I mash the gas. And it's not too bad for less than a day in the driveway and under $1,000 for parts. Yeah, give or take. One thing's for sure. Old Casper's going to scare the competition out on the boulevard now. Boo! Now, fear not. We'll be right back after this short break. Stay with us. How about putting Casper on the bottle next Ooh, time? Ooh, I like, like that. that That's some instant horsepower. Mm -hmm. Later on, from the hottest hot rods to the quickest top sportsman, it's IHRA competition from Cordoba. Stay with us. For the latest news on Horsepower TV, check us out online at HorsepowerTV.com. Hey, welcome back to the shop. Now, in case you missed it, we just finished a high-tech hop-up on my van there for more power. Plus, we've slammed the suspension for a whole new stance and added some body panels and graphics for a whole new look. About the only thing that we haven't worked on so far is the interior. We're about to change that now. Hey, tell me, what's the first thing you notice when you step inside this ride? A uh, dirty windshield. <laughs> no, man, the gauges. And with this elaborate piece of plastic here, well, we're going to have a set of white face gauges to match the rest of old Casper. Let me show you how easy it goes in. First thing you want to do is remove the front fascia and pull gently because it's snapped into place. Disconnect any wiring harnesses. Remove the lens in front of the gauges. And after marking their locations, carefully remove the needles. Then the instrument pod can come out of the dash. Then remove the dash face trim and peel away the original face. Then take the new face and peel away the paper backing. Carefully line everything up and press the new face into place. Now you can go ahead and reinstall the needles. Then after you reinstall the lens and dash face, you're done. By the way, this kit comes from APC, which has them for most popular applications. Oh, and partner, better face it, this was a good idea. Hey, speaking of applications, well, here's something that you apply right to your dash to give even more of that high-tech look. Now, Infinity Products makes these press-on panels with that carbon fiber appearance. To install them, you just clean the dash with rubbing alcohol, then peel a plastic strip from the two-sided tape and press it into place. The final piece in our carbon fiber facelift is this steering wheel cover from Grant. Now, it just snaps on right over the steering wheel, and it doesn't interfere with the airbag, so it's safe, too. Things are looking pretty good up front, but the backseat passengers ought to be happy with this. It's a console with a built-in TV and video player. Also comes from Infinity Products. But before we install it, we got some assembly to do, starting with wiring. First, the video player gets a power cord and a pair of RCA plugs. Okay, now let's get this cover out of the way. And we can connect the player to the TV. There we are. Add the TV's power plug. Put her in place. And we'll secure it with this Velcro strap. With the cover back on, install the faceplate here. And you'll be ready to put it in the vehicle. Okay, man, she's all yours. All right, man, you did a great job on that. Got it? Yeah, let's get it into place here. Man, that thing fits perfect. Now, the console kit comes with this hardwire harness that lets you permanently power the TV, video player, and even this optional beverage mate. Now, this thing will keep your drinks hot or cold at the flip of a rocker switch. Now, we plan on transferring this thing from vehicle to vehicle, so we're going to use these power plugs that use the van's accessory outlets. Well, now I can ride down the road and watch a movie or even check out my favorite TV show. Speaking of which... Hey, dummy, you forgot to tell him about the remote. Oh, uh, well, 
Thanks for the no, reminder. No, no. Now, don't you touch your remote. We'll be back with more Horsepower TV after this. Horsepower TV's Race of the Week is brought to you by Edelbrock, the leader in automotive performance for nearly 75 years. This week we're in the heart of Mid-America for the Amway Oil Summer Nationals. So if you're ready, let's leave the pits and go light them up. Welcome to Cordova Dragway Park in Northern Illinois for the fourth national event in IHRA competition. As the racing heats up, the track gets hotter. And some of the hottest cars out here are the top sportsmen. These cars not only have speed, they have a personality all their own. That goes for Jeff Paloma and his 63 Corvette, lovingly called the Beast. We just wanted to uh, do a throwback to the old days of drag racing where all the cars were named. Uh, I think it, it has a lot of crowd appeal, I think. People like it, especially the nitrous purge out the nostrils. Jeff did get his nitrous-fed beast to turn over 180 miles an hour, enough to clinch a place in Saturday's final. The fast cars might attract a crowd, but IHRA isn't just for high-priced drag cars. One of the hottest classes here is for door slammers only, the hot rod class. In Hot Rod, the racers run a 5 tenths Pro Tree, and all cars run a 1090 dial-in. It's bracket racing with a heads-up field. Let's ride along with points leader David Hill as he tells us his strategy for taking home a win. I'm going to clear my mind, make sure I'm focused on the, on the Christmas tree, try to cut the best light I can. And then uh, as I start off down track, I'm going to uh, I want to be looking for the other guy because the object is you want to get there first without going too fast, and that's what gets a W. This is a perfect class for guys just getting started in drag racing. And 12-year veteran David has some advice for newcomers. IHRA drag racing is, is for, you know, the little guys like us to come out and have a good time and, and uh, be able to get out in front of people and run national events. And uh, it's awesome to come out here, race with these guys. And uh, there's a bunch of really great racers and you can learn a lot. You know, just don't be scared to come out and give it a try. One racer that came out to give it a try for the first time is Rich Butheris of Burlington, Iowa. I've always been into street riding but I thought at the age of mid-50s, I'd better do a drag car before I'm too old to do it. Rich gave it his best this weekend, but a problem with his cooling system would affect him for the rest of the weekend. One team that made sure they'd have no problems this race was Barbara Hedgie and her dad, Rick. For them, racing is more than just for winning. It's become a family affair. We have a lot of fun together. We meet a lot of nice people at these races, real nice people, a lot of families. A lot of them. I don't get to spend a lot of time with them during the week, so the weekend's a good time to spend time with them. Even though they've been racing for four years, this is their first IHRA event, and so far, so good. Yeah, this quick rod is the first time we've ever came out to IHRA and ran, and uh, I gotta say that I'm, I'm impressed with what they've got. It's, uh, it's a little easier, a little more relaxed racing here. Rick might like the laid back pace, but Barbara has a few different reasons. The speed, <laughs> the acceleration, launching off of the line. It's just, it's incredible. I love this. I couldn't be any happier. Only one thing could be hotter than today's qualifying rounds, and that's Friday night's quick eight. The top sportsman duked it out to find out who was the quickest streetcar. And it would be Jack O'Dell and his 70 Chevelle going against Doug Mills' 93 Thunderbird. And O'Dell took the top spot, even though it wasn't the prettiest way to do it. We caught up with him the next day. Well, we kind of finished up wild. It was a good run. Uh, hit the lean out, things got a little wild. But we got down there and we win, I guess that's what counts. It ain't the way we like to do it, but that's what we did it. Jack wouldn't be so lucky in the finals, however, losing in the first round. Rich would also go out in the first round still having trouble with his cooling. Even though I had problems, I had a good time, and I'm glad I made it here. 
Now for the finals. In Hot Rod, it would be Wayne Christopher in his 84 Monte Carlo taking the win. Bill Newell's Mustang took the top sportsman class, edging out Lynn King in his Daytona. And in Pro Outlaw, Mick Snyder blazed away, taking the win light with a speed of 223 miles an hour. Meanwhile, here are all the sportsman winners of race four in the 2000 IHRA Championship Series. Hey, welcome back to the shop. You know, a while back, we did some flow bench testing on various port modifications, and we found that the best place to spend your time and energy is in the short side radius and the bowl area right under the valve. In fact, pocket porting properly done can increase your flow number significantly, up to 30% in some cases. Now, you can send your heads out and pay to have them done, or you can do it yourself. To modify your heads, you're going to need a die grinder and an assortment of abrasive rolls and discs like this one from Standard Abrasive. Plus, you'll need eye protection and ear protection and a set of headstands like this to hold your heads firmly in place while you're working on them. Now, carbide bits like this one are used for fast metal removal or major reshaping, and until you get some experience under your belt, well, they're probably best left in the hands of the professionals. This is the short side radius and a very critical area when it comes to improving the flow into and out of the combustion chamber. Now, what you want to do here is eliminate any bumps and lumps in the port or any casting flash that you might find there, then smooth the transition on the short side radius and into the valve throat. You can rough in the port starting with a 40 grit cartridge roll then finish it off with an 80 grit roll. And while you're in there, make sure that you don't touch the valve seat area with either the abrasive roll or the rotating part of the grinder, or you could end up replacing the valve seats too. <coughs> Next, turn your attention to the roof of the port and the valve guide area or the bowl. Now, what you want to do here is just smooth any rough casting areas, not reshape them. And you may have to work through the port opening using a long mandrel to get at all the areas properly. The final step is to open up the valve throat right here just above the valve seat. A general rule is that the throat opening should be about 85% of the valve diameter. Again, work carefully so you don't damage the valve seat and start with a 40 grit roll, finish with an 80. Repeat the process on both the intake and exhaust ports and your engine will breathe a lot easier and reward you with more horsepower. Now, if it's your first attempt at modifying cylinder heads, well, you may want to start on a set of junkers first. Now, most machine shops have old heads lying around that either didn't pass the mag test or are otherwise unusable and they'd gladly donate them to the cause. Now, before you know it, hey, you're going to be ready to go with the flow and pick up some extra performance at the same time. Well, speaking of time, it's time for us to take a little bit of a break now, but we'll be back with more Horsepower TV after this. And now Hot Parts, brought to you by CarParts.com. Everything for your car, truck, van, or SUV. Here's a way to keep a low profile in your 64 to 72 GMA body. It's a custom wound spring and shock combination from the original parts group. Now this setup will lower your car two or three inches while keeping a comfortable ride. And of course the KYB gas shocks will keep everything under control too with the right length and valving for each application. So now you can get down with the best of them by only coming up with $169 for a pair of springs and the shocks start at $40 and up. Here's something else that will shock you. It's a plasma coil from Moroso. And inside the extruded aluminum housing are some high-tech components they say will generate up to twice as much spark energy as the competition. They've got it for both points type and capacitor discharge ignitions, both with a simple two-wire hookup. And you can hook up with one for about 85 bucks and up. 
Well, this next hot part will help you get hooked up too. It's a carbon fiber drive shaft from Trick Race Parts. Now, it's available in lengths up to 52 inches, and the billet ends and carbon fiber construction help make it one of the lightest and strongest drive shafts on the market. So now you can reduce rotating mass and get off the line just a little bit quicker with prices starting at about $700. All right, well, quicker than you know it. Our time is up, but here's a little look at next week's show. We'll upgrade our Pro Touring Pony suspension with upper and lower control arms, plus some tunable coilover shocks. We'll install some new disc brakes and show you a cool way to bleed your brakes. In our race of the week, the past is new again as we tag along with some new nostalgic drag racers of the 21st century. And remember, high performance fun is what this show is all about. Hey, that was neat watching you on the Vans TV earlier. Yeah, what? Well, you were this tall, though. Really? Yeah. You know what? You look a little small now yourself. Oh, really? Let's go watch it on a big set somewhere. I hear you. For information about the products used in today's show and more, check us out online at horsepowertv.com. Horsepower TV is an RTM production.